government that uh, does not have the money to fund higher education, to create jobs, uh, health care, edu uh, public education, but seems always to have uh, the will and the money to finance wars. Um, so what I have here was um, released by the Friends Committee on National Legislation, that's the Quakers, and it's a letter that has so far been signed by 41 faith leaders, um, and which includes um, the Adventist Peace Fellowship, the Muslim, American Muslim Voice, uh, let me find Carmelites, Christian Reformed Church, Church of the Brethren, uh, Episcopal Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, that's the ELCA, Mennonites, Mary Noel, uh, Jewish Voice of Peace, a Jewish Peace Fellowship, Jesuit Conference, Disci Uni uh, United Church of Christ, Christian Church Disciples of Christ, which is my affiliation, Fellowship of Reconciliation, I'm just reading a few of them, Network of Spiritual Progressives, that's Rabbi Michael Lerner, um, Pax Christi, Presbyterian Church, United Methodist Church, again I said United Church of Christ, Sojourners, Sisters of Mercy, Shalom Network, um, the Shalom Center with Rabbi Arthur Owaskov. And I'll just pull out a couple of statements from it. It says, Dear Members, this was a, uh, the date is September 9th. Dear Member of Congress, as leaders of faith organizations, we are writing to urge you to vote against any authorization for the use of military force in Syria. While we unequivocally condemn any use of chemical weapons along with indiscriminate killing of civilians and other violations of international humanitarian law, military strikes are not the answer. Rather than bringing an end to violence that has already cost more than 100,000 lives, U.S. military strikes threaten to widen the vicious civil war in Syria and undermine prospects to de-escalate the violence and eventually reach a just negotiated settlement in which all actors are held accountable for crimes committed. All of us recognize the challenge of the present moment in the midst of this ongoing tragedy. However, this is not a choice between military action and doing nothing, a frame which, again, is being used to legitimate violence. Rather than yielding to the temptation to fuel the fire with more violence, we see an opportunity for the United States to leverage the full weight of its diplomatic influence and resources to advance a just negotiated settlement that includes all internal and external parties to the conflict. Therefore, we encourage Congress and the President to support the following actions. One, lead international diplomatic efforts to prevent further use of chemical weapons. Governments around the world, including Iran and Russia, have condemned the use of chemical weapons in Syria, and the United States should work to direct this international resolve toward de decisive diplomatic action. Two, and there's only three, de-escalate the violence, refrain from providing military support to the opposition, and press Saudi Arabia and Turkey to do the same while continuing to call on Russia and Iran to cease military support for the Syrian government. Increasing violence in order to punish, send a message, or gain military advantage, in fact, makes negotiations less likely to result in a durable democracy, much less a just peace. And finally, number three, pursue a political settlement with all stakeholders of the conflict. We must signal to the world the urgency of advancing a political settlement that seeks to end the violence and ensure accountability. Negotiations should include key civil society nonviolent actors and include determination of broader accountability mechanisms. In closing, we urge you to oppose authorization for the use of military force in Syria and instead to consider seriously these alternatives. You are in our prayers. Sincerely, the undersigned. Good. If anyone else like to make a statement, Patty or anyone, before we go in? I'm just glad to see you all out here. I know that um, you know it's important at this juncture that everybody stand up and speak up against any more conflicts. Uh, it all matters to us at every level of uh, our, co our community, and it's a really important uh, issue that we make sure that our representative hears from us. So I'm glad you're here today. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Thank you for being here.
So I guess we're going to go into Senator Heinrich's office here in Santa Fe and deliver our peace message to him. Yeah, I'll be glad to send it to you. We're actually right here. Hey, how's it going? Oh, you guys came out to us. <laughs> yes, we did. We came out to listen to you all. We don't, we don't have a conference room that's big enough to accommodate all of you. So we're more than happy to listen to your concerns and pass them along to the Senate. I'm not passing this. No, no, no. This is a friend's committee. I, mean, you want to give us I have something I'd really like to say. I worked, as you guys know, Randy Upton, and I worked really hard for Mark. I brought him to El Dorado, the largest voting block, and I worked hard. Robert Laud, I heard from me on an ongoing basis, get him up north, and I supported him with all my heart and soul. How can we justify that Steve Pierce is opposed to this, but our Martin Heinrich supports it? And I would hope that as the junior senator, that he would have learned from our Tom Udall, who has been absolutely A+. plus. Please remind him if we got him elected. Okay. We did. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it, Well, I, I think he forgot what the word constituency means. All of us, huh? Well, it means what I'm made out of. What he's made out of. Uh -huh. Okay? Yes. And he's made out of our voices. And That's he forgot right. that. Yes. Yes. So, remember your constituency. Yeah. And what happens if you don't? Well, you probably don't get reelected. next You get primary. What's that? Oh, you get kicked out in the primary? <laughs> Challenge. We, we yeah. find somebody else who's going to run who's going to represent the Mexicans. Yeah. Uh, if you have uh, seen the alternate article mm -hmm. on the uh, actions that the U.S. has been taking over a period of years in a number of ways to exacerbate the conflict in Syria, um, you will know that uh, Martin uh, Heinrich undoubtedly is aware of those particular actions that have been taken and so that his rationale for his position, namely that uh, the morality of Assad with regard to uh, his uh, violence against his own people is, is thin, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense uh, because it's uh, the uh, the proposal to bomb Syria is just part of this continuing series of actions that the U.S. has taken to exacerbate conflict there. Why do they do that? Well, they don't like Assad for one reason. Uh, one possible reason is that I think it's Qatar wishes to put a pipeline across Syria, which would uh, be a disadvantage to Iran. So this might be a way of, of getting at Iran by getting rid of Assad and with some other regime that would allow Qatar to get his pipeline across the country. Uh, Assad doesn't uh, won't allow it now. So that there's so just in general there's some, some things behind the scene that I'm sure Martin Heinrich is, is aware of that makes his rationale um, not the greater morality is is getting a cease uh, fire of the parties um, in this matter, not uh, because of I have a question. Has Heinrich modified his position at all in response to Russia's dip diplomatic initiative? Yeah, he prefers diplomacy. I mean, our office put out a press release following this president's statement last night. I mean, that's obviously our first preference, um, and it's up on our website. So, yeah, um, that's the hope. I mean, the hope is diplomacy and that this can be dealt with nonviolently. So are, you, are you a spokesman for the office? I work for the office, yes. We both do. So this is uh, yeah, there's a, There was a statement released last night up on our website uh, following the president's speech, basically reiterating just that. Well, uh, I'll have to look at that. I was, I was really, really disappointed in the letter. Okay. That was a real disappointment. And it, it essentially said to me, well, you know, I know you all disagree with me, but I'm going to go do what I want to do. And, and it was a real slap in the face to you know, what I said before about the constituency, who and what he's made of, who brought him into office, and who he works for. So we're going to pass that along. Thank you. But I, I will say that, you know, I know Senator Heinrich to be a reasonable man and a thoughtful man. So my hope is that 
you know, he was perhaps taking his cues from the administration, and my hope is that everybody is going to resolve this in a diplomatic and peaceful manner. And so, but I think it's super important that we're all out here to let him know that we're watching, and that that is what we prefer, and that is what we ask um, of our representatives. I would like to say, uh, I did read the Senator's first statement, and I, I actually appreciate the difficulty of this whole situation, and I think all of us are appalled by the, the chemical bombing as well as the ongoing war there. Um, I would like to say from a personal perspective, I had a student this past year, a Muslim girl, teenager from Pakistan, and I have a very personal insight into how important it is that we stop bombing Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. We must find other ways and stop bombing Muslims. Now we, our office definitely appreciates all your thoughtfulness on this. I mean, that's, that's the, I mean, the one thing I think that is good about this is that it's awakened some debate in our country on a lot of different issues. Um, and it's important to have really thoughtful, reflective people like yourselves engaging our office on these kind of things. And so that, that I, you know, I know I'm personally grateful for. And I, you know, and our office is definitely open to your all solutions around these issues. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really brutal issue, as you all know. Um, 100,000 people have been killed in the last two years in that country, civil war and how to try to navigate that um, in thoughtful, reflective ways is, is really challenging. But we, you know, we're definitely open to all solutions on this, too. Pauline, did you um, Yeah, I, I think probably for me the most difficult statement that came from our president, not necessarily the senator, was his saying that the United States could not allow a country to commit such atrocities without being held accountable. And so for me, in the back of my mind, is Iraq and particularly the amount of depleted uranium that we inflicted on that country, on their fields, on their streams, on the children that are, be are being born with birth defects, and to come from the lips of a president who said, we're not going to hold that administration accountable for those atrocities, it, it, it concerns me that we can say those things without acknowledging how it may sound to so many to the three million refugees from Iraq, the other five million who've been displaced from their homes and their and their farms, um, and and the utter chaos and human suffering that's been created by the United States and our diplomatic efforts uh, interfering with uh, sovereign nations there. Um, that that I think for me is what I find the most uh, troubling about this whole. Uh, Exchange. Do you all have any thoughts on um, the, on the refugee issue? Any, there's apparently around six million refugees in Syria. What are the thoughts on how to work with that situation? Well, I think we should um, support the refugees and uh, do what's needed to meet their needs. One way to approach the uh, <clears throat> actions against Assad is to encourage people to leave the country and put adequate support to those refugees. And if enough people leave their country, his regime will have lost its credibility and will likely fail. Yeah, with regard to the chemical uh, warfare, could you tell me what we used in, in Vietnam? Yeah. And what do we do to the women and children? We used Agent Orange. And I didn't, I mean, my brother started the first teaching in the country against that war at University of Michigan. And uh, my parents' house was almost burned down. So what I'm thinking is, boy, last night Obama cared so much. Well, guess what? I go back, that's my generation, and I'll never forget that Agent Orange. We have used chemical warfare. So are we the police people of the world? Or would you say that maybe we've done atrocities too? And I would hope that Martin, as, a, as brilliant a man as he is, would take a look at history. We're doomed to repeat it. And if Steve Pierce can say no, Martin Heinrich can say no. Have the calls have come into the office? Or can you give us an idea of uh, how the count has gone? No, I, I haven't personally kept uh, the count, but just like the phone calls I've taken, I would say probably about 90-10. Against? Yes, 90% against and about 10% of in support. And, you know, it's various for various reasons. Mm -hmm.
Well, I, I want to say something about the issue of morality and the use of chemical weapons. Back in World War I, when these weapons were first unleashed, they were a method to uh, kill hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of people in one blow. Since that time, uh, killing re has advanced in its technology tremendously, and we can kill hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands with one blow. So as to the issue of these chemicals being immoral, they're no more immoral than any other methods that we use to kill people. And we should not be up in arms because somebody unleashed poison gas. We should be up in arms because such atrocities where thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands are killed in one fell swoop, be them civilian or military. And the United States is the most guilty of that because of the atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were indiscriminate. Anything more and more people kind of waking up to what's happening in this. That's uh, promising. <laughs> There's a time. We, we know what's going on. We're gradually waking up to this. Well, I would say that we've always known, but it's very, very painful to look at your parents, the country, the president, you know, father figure, the excellent person, and really see what's. He, what he's made of and what this country is made of, and it can change. And that's the important part here, that we have the power to change it, and we have the power to change our administrations and everything that goes with it. We really do have power, and that's very frightening for people to know how powerful they can be. It's much easier to go to sleep. So please, help your neighbors and your friends become aware of what's going on. And then we can make changes, and we will. It takes a lot of work. I mean, a lot of work. Maybe, maybe it'll take an American spring. Maybe. <laughs> Andrew, American. I wanted to respond to your question about the refugees. Yeah. Um, I don't have a solution, but I think it's worthwhile to observe what the Muslim uh, community in the Middle East has done mm -hmm. in response to all of the refugees. And what they have done is they've thrown open their borders and done their very best to absorb them into their communities at great cost. And um, I think that it's a testament to what this so-called, at least in the mind of some, Christian nation might be able to, because when they are asked, why are you doing this, they point to the religious precepts of their faith, Islam, that they are required to do that. Um, and um, I think that it is a testament to all of us. Well, thank you. Do you believe that Martin is capable of change with this decision? I mean, I think Martin's open to discerning where it goes with the diplomacy, and I mean, that's where our hope is. I mean, but with nine people out, out of ten letting him know, don't do this, one person, my question is, why is he going with the one rather than the nine? Because all because nine of us. His election isn't for four years. years. Pardon? His election isn't for four years, right? No, he yeah. thinks that we'll forget, but so we yeah, don't. He thinks that we'll forget, no, we, we better not. Yeah. We will not forget. Yeah. How much be, of this support comes from a military industrial complex? complex. Can, you, can you answer that question? There's no way of knowing. Some people call and leave an opinion and leave information, and others just leave an opinion. Well, he's asking about monetary so, support. Yes. Oh, so I thought, I thought you meant phone calls. No, 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 we don't, yeah, we we don't work for the campaign. Senate staffers. That's something you, you can actually find that online. That's all public information. Exactly. Yeah, there's a website. Yeah, you can find it online. You know the name of the website? Oh, I don't know. If it's opensecrets.org. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I guess I could say that, um, you know, if, if the senator's concern is promoting peace in the Middle East and ending civilian death, we really need to prioritize that the U.S. and World War instead of dropping more bombs. Need, we need to prioritize ending the U.S. drone war in the Middle East. Okay. And the drone war? Now, the dro drones are an immoral weapon. Very immoral. They are. They're more immoral than, than bombs or poison gas or bullets. They're very immoral. 
just just for our own office's knowledge, how, um, how many of you read the senator's letter? I wanted to comment on the senator's letter. Sure. I thought it was not good. I thought it was um, a very weak argument for what he said. It was actually annoying because he said, please, all I ask you to do, I know you're probably not going to believe me or like me any better after this, but read to the end. Mm -hmm. I kept waiting for something <laughs> other than I saw some ugly stuff on TV. Which is what he said. He said, "Look at these terrible videos." How many? How many of you watched? It was the just videos? an emotional. I watched the videos after that. I was like, "Okay, I'm going to go watch some TV for my senator now." And I saw some horrific videos. It was terrible, just like it would be terrible no matter how. Like this gentleman said, no matter how, uh, other ways to kill people, mm -hmm. still <coughs> kill people, <coughs> and they can be more painful. And they can be just as indiscriminate. It was poor logic, and it was a big waste of my time to read that. Actually, and as, you know, I'm sorry I get, you felt that way. Yeah, I felt insulted. I said it before, but I'll say it again. I was insulted. Okay. You're going to have a lame ass excuse for something. Don't make us read your baloney about it. <laughs> we'll pass it along. I would, I would just point again to the content of the letter, which said that we understand that something needs to be done to stop the use of chemical weapons. Uh, our position is that that is not by dropping bombs. Uh, there needs to be an alternative, <coughs> and uh, we are way beyond, as a, as a global community, we're way beyond that being our only option. There are multitudes of options, and it concerns us how quickly um, our government is, after our recent history, is ready to consider that the only option. What, what do you all see as the best options to, to, stop, to stopping global. chemical weapons? Well, well, what's, what's happening right now? Giving that a good, a good, a good shot at, at resolving that for now. And what happened in Bosnia, which is having people focus on the future, Syria, where it's safe for people and where there is some form of government that can work. Focus on the future. Not getting everybody together in the same room where they're going to be angry at each other, but having each faction vision create vision of what would work for them and then bring that back to some leader, which couldn't have been us had we gone and bombed, right? We have to be lead after going and bombing one side. No, you get the information from each of the factions of how Syria could be, come, just the way they did that in Bosnia, very successfully. And they had the date and the cords, and it almost broke down because they got everybody back in a room. Diplomacy doesn't have to be everybody in the same room. It has to be, what do you need? What do you need? And go and someone in the middle going back and forth, mm -hmm. making sure it all works. And we haven't heard, uh, you know, uh, a peep, uh, you know, in terms of violence in Bosnia since. And it was almost as complicated as Syria. I, I think another, another step that we could take, a really major step, aside from the diplomacy, which is absolutely necessary is for the United States to take a step to stop using some form of violence as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That we need to lead the world mm -hmm. in nonviolence. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And stop right. giving arms. Mm -hmm. so, somebody yeah. has to right. set an example, and I'm not saying it should be or could be the United States. I would hope. But, but somebody needs to set an example on how to resolve conflicts in a in a better and more peaceful way without without the threat of destruction behind that. Okay, let's get together, let's let's build a community, let's build a country, let's build peace. Instead of if you don't want peace, we're gonna just dump on you. Okay. So there's gotta be there's gotta be an example. Some some way some example. So rather than the, the president trying to rally the American people to support an attack, I would want him to try and rally the world support and outrage if you can't get it through the Security Council, the UN, because of Russia and China, take it to the General Assembly, where you have the you know 200 nations, and, and you should be encouraging the, the world community to stand in solidarity. One of the biggest yeah. mistakes Bush made, 9-11, this being the anniversary of it, um, he went to the world and he said, if you're not with us, you're against us, and we will we will bomb you to death, okay? That mentality has carried through, more or less, to today. If he, had, if he had come to the world and said, look, 
there's a problem here, let's get together and solve this problem, it would have been a whole different story. Now, if Obama or somebody can come up and say we have a problem, let's figure out a way to solve it, I mean, they want to give credit to Kerry for, for saying, well, just turn your weapons on, eh? But, but who took it up? The Russians took it up, okay? So now the Russians are, say, are, are looking like heroes and let them be heroes. But there's an example, okay? Let's, let's work together for peace and let's not be a threat to the world. Kucinich posted an article today that the U.S. is proposing $13 billion more of military aid to like Saudi Arabia and a couple other countries in the Middle East. And it's like, how can we do that on one hand and then expect stability in the region on the other hand? You know, and also in terms of the chemical weapons, you know, who was using white phosphorus in Iraq? You know, we don't really have the moral authority to do unilateral strikes. And why would we be giving billions of dollars to Saudi Arabia and sitting on a pile of money? Um, it, 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 it's unconscionable. When we look at the budget cuts that, that working families are enduring in this country, we're all enduring, there's just no justification for that. Along with what Holly just said, uh, New Mexico is the poorest in terms of feeding our children. Mm -hmm. It was one in four uh, children who, were, who are starving. I'm not saying hungry. One in three we are now. A billion dollars over there, our schools are the worst, our kids aren't eating, and we're going over there to, to, to do a bombing episode. And, and, and my, my other question would be, why hasn't Martin looked at the calls he's received? When you're getting nine out of ten calls saying, don't do it, Martin, don't do it, why is he? He, he does get the tape the time. Aware of Let's think about it was because of the awful videos. Yeah. That's why. Well, I haven't read the, 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 the release, the release. That yeah. he issued last night, and, I, and so I will make a point of going back. Appreciate and that. Well, and I, and I also want to encourage, I mean, I appreciate your all's um, dissent and, and advocacy and activism. I think that's very helpful, and it's very good for our democracy. Could you um, guys look at Facebook and oh, see yeah. the reactions? We're on it. Um, and, I, and I also want to encourage you all, um, you know, I mean, there's budget wars to be fought, um, yes. so to speak, um, coming up in Congress. And as you all know, sequestration know. Um, hit New Mexico hard on sure. various levels. Um, and I think it's important for you all to continue to be active on those issues. Um, one of the issues that I cover is veterans. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been very active on quality of care for veterans. But in our country right now, we have 25 veterans committing suicide yes. every single day. Every day. And I think it's important for you all to continue to be active on those other issues um, that you we're losing more. The SNAP issue. Yeah, the yes. SNAP issue. I mean, um, domestic programs, awesome. our veterans programs. I think it's really important for you all to be active in, in a lot of other areas to make sure that human beings also have dignity, not just on that issue. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for you all being out here. Well, that's, Absolutely. that's another issue. Why don't we have a budget? Why don't we operate with an open checkbook? Why do we just pretend there's a budget and put sequestration in? It's time to have a budget. When's the last time we had a budget? That's, we understand where you're coming that's, from. That's, <laughs> totally. that's a, it's a heck of a battle. It's totally. Yeah, that, you know, that's one of the first disservices that you know, the government run wild with uh, financial authority and spending that they can do whatever they want with no budget whatsoever, no appropriations, no anything. So it's Will the senator be convening any kind of town hall so that he can hear from his constituents? Um, I'm not sure on that issue. I, you, I mean, the August recess obviously just finished up, um, so I mean, he's not back in the state for more prolonged periods. That's usually when you have town halls, right? Could we invite him <laughs> and let him know that, that he didn't come up during the, the campaign a whole lot, and we were pretty mm -hmm. upset about it. But we'd love one in Santa Fe. Are you kidding me? Sure. You'd, you'd, you'd have to turn out. Us. Sure. Send us a request, sure. we'll send Absolutely. Well, it's, it's not election time yet. I know. It seems to me that, yeah. yeah, but you know what? It it's, means that the Assad is being supported by the Russians and the Iranians. And the uh, revolutionary forces are being supported by Saudi Arabia <laughs> and probably some other uh, Sunni uh, country. So it'd be really important to get those people in negotiations because if they didn't support these uh, the two sides, it would seriously reduce the amount of conflict. That's right. Yeah, and we've seen Russia step up, so they've done a good job. And I'd also go out China and I'd also support their doing. Yeah, that's right.
Oh, no, that's, yeah, I appreciate that. I, I want to ask a quick question. Out of his constituents, there are 15, 20 people here today. What does that look like in terms of demographics? And why have a lot of show up? Is this like, does this represent uh, 40,000 people? What does it really represent? <laughs> You're asking me to do math, and I'm a liberal arts guy. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to be a challenge. But that would be a good thing to find out. Because we came, what does that mean? Sure, sure. Well, I appreciate I mean, that's, I definitely appreciate you all coming out, and I appreciate the civility and the respectfulness and the, the dialogue and the interchange and, and just the thoughtfulness around the issues. I mean, it's a very complex issue, and folks have brought so many different angles today, so I'm grateful for that. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, and I appreciate, and I know some of you were active on other issues around gun control, for example. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so so I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that you all have that. I think it's important that we have that, that same spirit of engagement in our country on a lot of issues. And this is Poverty issues, veterans issues. So thank you for those, those things. And I encourage you to continue being involved. Thank you for coming out. Oh, you got it.